Hello awesome people, I hope you're having an awesome day. So as you've probably seen from the title, I have a guest with me today and um, we'll be talking about something called the emotional freedom technique or no, um, it's also known as EFT or tapping and a lot about test anxiety and something about public speaking and also a term that I've learned from her, um, waffles. So now before we start, some of you might be very confused about the title and the abbreviations and everything and like the terms and everything. But please don't worry too much about that because I wasn't really sure about these terms either. But it would, I hope that it would be quite clear what they mean at the end of the episode. So today I'm here with Katie and we're here to talk about um, the stress and anxiety in uh, for teens living in today's world and also a lot about um, EFT uh, method Katie is quite familiar with. So Katie, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, first of all, for having me on your podcast. I'm very excited to be here all the way from Florida. I am a Florida mathematician. I have a PhD in mathematics education. I went back to school when I was older. And um, as I was doing my research, I found that I was looking for ways to help students overcome fear, anxiety about math and test taking. Because we always have a little bit of, uh, I guess, anxiety when we're taking tests because we want to do our very best. But I had so many students who were completely overwhelmed by the idea of of studying math or taking tests. So I wanted to find a way to help them. And that's when I discovered um, emotional freedom technique, EFT or tapping. And I've been able to help literally hundreds of people now. Um, And now that I'm a trainer, I can train others to help people overcome fear and anxiety. I, I call it Dissolving your waffles, dissolving your worries, anxiety, fear, frustration, lethargy, exhaustion, and stress. It's one of my passions. So um, one question I have about EFT is um, for me, I've tried different like methods to decrease like anxiety and stress. How is tapping different from other methods and other like, kind of therapy? Well, they have done clinical studies all over the world comparing what they call cognitive-based therapy, which is talk therapy, to something called EMDR, eye movement desensitization reprogramming, and tapping, EFT. And they found among the three of them that tapping is as effective, if not more effective, than cognitive-based therapy, talk therapy and is at just as effective as EMDR. The differences are with talk therapy or with EMDR, you have to be sitting and working with the therapist. With EFT, once you know how to do it, you can do it yourself. It's non-addictive, non-invasive, and you can control your level of stress. Now, why would you want to do that? Because we have stress every day and it's something that if we don't address it, it will build up in our bodies. And as we are uh, growing up, so as your audience of growing teens have probably had stress in their lives from when they were young child. And if we don't address it, it's going to manifest itself in our bodies. Yeah, because I feel like sometimes the stress is like boiling up on me and my work is affecting, uh, my stress is affecting my work and my overall like productivity in school. So how do you think people could manage that? And like, what has the effect of like mental health been in schools and for teens in school and like their behavior? One of the first things that, um, my clients say after a session, a one hour session is, oh my gosh, I feel lighter. (laughs) Now, what's interesting is nobody comes in and says, I'm feeling so heavy, but they feel lighter once they can release it. Stress actually um, has physical effects in our body. 
increase cortisone levels, increase um, adrenal levels, um, a thyroid. So it affects many parts of our body. Once we can address stress and reduce the cortisol, reduce the adrenal so that we're out of what we call the stress mode, we're out of fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, you'll have more oxygen to the brain. You can think clearer. You can make decisions better. And all of that studying that you've been doing actually will allow, is allowed to come through on the test. Would you like to go through an example? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> so for those listening in the audience, I'm going to get very specific about where we're going to tap and I'm going to ask questions. There are a lot of different types of tapping. What we're going to go through is something called the basic recipe. I work with clients um, depending on their needs. The basic recipe is very, very specific. So I'll ask you some questions, very, very specific. But I also have other tools like picture tapping. I have some clients that come in and they just say, I'm overwhelmed. And you ask them, well, when was the last time you were overwhelmed? And they're like, I've been overwhelmed for years. And for those kind of people with those kind of issues, then it's better to do picture tapping because then we can just kind of do a more global. But what we'll do as the example is what's called basic tapping. Okay. So I'll ask you a whole bunch of questions and um, it's important that we use your words because your body hears your words, right? So if you can think of something in the last 24 or 36 hours that's caused you any waffles, something that's caused you to be worried, anxious, fearful, uh, frustrated, lethargic, exhausted, or stressed, what would that be? Um, my friends. Your uh, friends? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, do I have to give more examples or? You know what's interesting is that you don't have to tell me what it is, but you can think about it. Um, and so what I'm going to ask you is when you think about your friends, when was the last time that your friends made you feel waffled? <laughs> mm, today morning. Okay. So today morning, where were you when you felt that way? Um, in, uh, I think um, in this football pitch. In a what? In a football pitch. A football pitch. Okay. I don't know what that is, but you know what it is. So that's fine. So this morning in a football pitch, uh, your friends did something. Now tell me what emotion, when you think about it right now, in this moment, when you think about it, what emotion is coming up? Um, frustration. Frustration. Okay. And from the top of your head to the bottom of your toes, where do you feel the frustration in your body? The chest. In your chest. Okay. And from zero to 10, where zero is like, ah, no big deal. It'll be fine. And 10 is the most frustrated you've ever been in your entire life. How frustrated do you feel right now thinking about it? Um, six. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to tell you the spots that we're going to tap on first. And then we'll add words. And then that way the audience can kind of come along with us. Okay. Okay. So if you take one hand and you look at your palm <clears throat> between your wrist and your little finger right there on that side, you're going to tap right there using four fingers of your other hand, you'll tap on the side of the, of the other hand. And it doesn't matter which hand, you can do either one, it doesn't matter. And when we tap on here, we're going to say a sentence three times, the variation of sentences. And then when we're finished with that, the next spot is right on the top of your head, and so you'll tap on the top of your head and you can use one hand or the other or both hands. It doesn't matter. And tap on the top of your head. And then the next spot is above your nose on the edge of your eyebrow. So above your nose on the edge of your eyebrow. And then it's on the temple. So uh, between your uh, edge of your eye and your hairline, you tap right there. And then the next spot is under your eye. So you go right under your eye. And then under your nose, go under your nose, under your lips, 
and then cross your uh, wrist and tap right on your collarbone. And you can breathe while you're doing it. Breathing's good. <laughs> and then the last spot is four inches under your arm. You're going to tap on your ribs and you can give them a good hearty tap. And the, those are all the points uh, for the basic recipe. So let's start with words and uh, correct me if I say something that I, that I got the words mixed up, okay? Um, and last question I have, is this a true statement? Right here, right now, I feel safe. Yes, true. Okay. For those in the listening audience, if that's not true, pick another statement that is true, such as right here, right now, I accept the way I feel. Or right here, right now, someday I accept the way I feel. So we'll start on the side of the hand and repeat after me as we say, even though. Even though. When I think about this morning. When I think about this morning. With my friends. With my friends. In the football pitch. In the football pitch. I feel frustrated in my chest. I feel frustrated in my chest. Right here, right now, I feel safe. We're here right now, I feel safe. And then we're gonna repeat that two more times, even though. Even though. Remembering this morning with my friends. Remembering this morning with my friends. In the football pitch. In the football pitch. I feel this frustration in my chest. I feel this frustration in my chest. Right here, right now, I feel safe. Right here, right now, I feel safe. Last time, even though, even though in my chest, I feel some frustration in my chest. I feel some frustration. Just thinking about my friends at the football pitch. Just thinking about my friends at the football pitch. This morning. This morning. Right here, right now, I feel safe. Right here, right now, I feel safe. And then top of the head and you tap on the top of the head and you say, Oh, this frustration in my chest. Oh, this frustration in my chest. And then above your nose on the edge of your eyebrow, this frustration in my chest. This frustration in my chest. On the side of the eye next to the hairline, this frustration in my chest. This frustration in my chest. Under the eye, this frustration in my chest. This frustration in my chest. Under the nose, this frustration in my chest. This frustration in my chest. Under the lips, this frustration in my chest. This frustration in my chest. On your collarbone, this frustration in my chest. This frustration in my chest. And on your ribs, this frustration on my chest. This frustration on my chest. Now blow all your air out. <laughs> I can't do that. Okay. I can't blow <laughs> things up. <laughs> well, when you think about this morning and you're in um, the football pitch with your friends, the frustration in your chest from zero to 10, how high is it now? Um, four. So that little exercise brought the frustration down. And as you continue doing tapping and get more specific, like what did your friends do or say? And you think about it, you can get it down to zero so that you will remember the memory, but the feeling that that the sense of frustration will be gone. Now, when you have that sense of frustration gone, what happens is your body releases the stress so that your immune system is stronger, you can think clear, you have more oxygen going to the brain and you'll be able to focus more on your studies. How long does it take for it to like, do I have to practice it like regularly or consistently? Or is it like a one-time thing? You can do it once and it'll work the same if you've like done it five times before. That's a great question. And the answer is, it depends. <laughs> Once you identify what the limiting belief is, let me give you an example. I had a client one time, huge, really tall man, 
six foot four inches tall. Um, and he, he had been uh, an officer in the military and he'd retired and is now working on a ranch uh, like a farm. And he came to me and he said, I hate spiders. I said, we can work on that. So I worked with him and I said, what is it about the spiders you don't like? He said, I hate walking into their spider webs. And where he was working, there were spider webs everywhere because it was a ranch, right? And so we worked on the fact that he didn't like going through their spider webs. It was all gone. It went down to zero, finished. I saw him a few weeks later. I said, how are you doing? He said, I hate spiders. I said, wait a minute. We got that all cleared up. He said, I don't worry about the webs anymore. They don't bother me. He said, I, what I hate is I hate the way that they crawl and the way their little legs move. And I said, well, we can work on that. And he said, no, no, I, I'm fine now. So what happens is when you have something that's triggering a negative um, emotion, you can release it, but it, there are so many aspects of it. I had a client who was scared of, to fly in an airplane and we worked and she had to fly. She had to go, she had to fly. And we worked with her because when you, when people say I'm scared of flying, it's like, well, what is it about the flying? Mm -hmm. She didn't like being closed up. She didn't like being around so many people. Um, that, and that I, she didn't like the noise. And I, I never would have guessed that. I thought people were scared of flying because they were, you know, didn't like the takeoff or they didn't like the landing. That didn't bother her at all. So once you can identify what it is that you are specifically concerned about and you can tap that down to zero so it doesn't come up anymore, then that particular issue does not come up. In training, they had us make a list of 100 things that bothered us, 100 things that made us worried, that we were anxious about. And as we tapped on each one of those things, um, then like I would tap on number one, number two, number three. And then I'd look at number 37. And I'm like, I'm not worried. I don't have that negative emotion anymore. So sometimes tapping on different items will clear something that you thought you'd never get rid of for for me i don't know if you've heard this before but for me i have like i don't i don't know what's wrong with me but i'm just really fidgety and i like to move around a lot and um what you just took me through it was for me it felt really good just because i got to like move around it was, it was like i didn't have to sit here and like face the laptop with my hands like dangling around and not doing anything so right. so yeah it helped a lot and, and I really enjoyed it <laughs> I'm so glad yeah and I'm I'm and that's like the point of this whole podcast is like I'm young so I'm trying to like, figure everything out so I'm just trying a lot of different things and some like what you said about the tapping like it really depends if it works for um a, a specific person so I'm just trying things out some of it works some of it doesn't and I had like moments on like my other episodes where things just didn't work out at all yeah so so I'm really glad this one did work pretty well it has been um amazing I've had clients literally from all over the world from Somebody, um, a gentleman in Spain who had just lost a girlfriend and he was feeling heartbroken to a gentleman in Mexico who just lost a lot of weight and he couldn't, he couldn't enjoy his meals because every time he sat down to eat, he was so afraid he was going to gain that back. Um, I've had uh, ladies in Canada who were, um, had grief from people dying. I've had a lot of students um, that I've worked with to help them prepare for tests, to um, get over fears. I had one young lady who had taken a test in America. There's a test called the Scholastic Aptitude Test, the SATs. 
and they, they, most all high school seniors take this test to see if they qualify for college. So it has a lot of um, weight, right? Um, it, it has a, a pretty big importance. Well, she had taken her SAT test and had done very well. She could definitely use those scores to get into the college she wanted, but she felt like she could do a better job. And if she got higher scores, she might be eligible for more scholarships to get more money for college. So she registered and paid to take the test a second time. She studied every day to prepare for this test, right? She took the test and her scores went down because she was so anxious and worried about trying to improve the scores, right? But she knew she could do better. So she registered and paid for it a third time. <clears throat> she got busy, school was, there was a lot of things going on at school and she wasn't able to study. Well, the week before the test was gonna be all day Saturday, and that Sunday, she panicked. She said, Mom, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've got the test coming up. I haven't had a chance to study. I don't know what I'm going to do. So her mom hired me, and we worked for one hour on Monday, one hour on Wednesday, one hour on Friday. On Saturday, when she took the test, her score went up by 90 points. That and she hadn't studied. And so what we had done is cleared her stress talked about what worried her, what, what was on her mind, so that her brain could put out on this test exactly what, what they were looking for. And it made all the difference. You, because I feel like I really agree with everything you're saying, because like stress, a good amount can get us like really studying and going really hard and like getting everything memorized really well. But sometimes I would like, the um, anxiety makes me like study a lot but when I see the test in front of me I kind of like freeze I'm just looking and you're like oh why have I studied for like two months just for this piece of paper and just really lost sometimes and I would sometimes just lay down on the table and like not like not feel motivated to do anything so I think um studying is really important but so is like getting everything um, mentally ready. And that really relates to like your TEDx talk about math anxiety, because it's really common for people in math to feel, um, like doing math and math tests to feel like um, unmotivated and feeling like quite useless because math is quite hard. And so how do you think um, someone should, like could manage that anxiety in maths? That's a great question. Um, so what you do is before the test, and actually even when you're studying, because sometimes when you're studying and you're studying the math, you, you have these thoughts in your head about why am I even bothering? You know, I know when I get to the test, I'm going to freeze or, or how am I going to remember all this information or all these negative thoughts that you say to yourself, tap them out, tap them out. So you can say, um, even though um, I'm, however you feel about the test, if you think about the test coming up, even though I'm worried about how I'm going to do on the test right here, right now, I feel safe. And so you, you, you actually say out loud how you feel. And sometimes just saying that out loud makes a difference, right? Because we're, we're supposed to be positive and we're supposed to be only, you know, promoting the, the good stuff. But unless we express how we're feeling about it, those feelings get stuffed down. So tapping before the test is a great idea. Tapping while you're studying is great. Now I have a few hints for you during the test. When you're at the test, if you want to want to relieve your, your um, anxiety or, or fears during the test and you don't wanna be tapping on your head, <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. If you take your feet and you put both feet right on the ground and with one foot, if you put one foot, the toe down and the heel up and the other foot, I'm using my hands <laughs> to demonstrate, the heel down and the toe up. So if you look at it sideways, it kind of looks like variable X. <laughs> um, 
but one toe is down and on the other uh, foot, the heel's down. And then you slowly and carefully reverse it so that now the foot that had the toe down, you have the heel down. And the foot that had the heel down, you have the toe down. And then you kind of slowly reverse it. And so your feet are giving your body the sensation of fleeing. And isn't that one of the uh, stress yes. things? Fight, flight, flee, flee. So having uh, that sensation of, of moving is really good. There's also something called the humming breath. And you can do this before you go into the room. Some testing centers don't want you to hum while you're doing it. But if you take a deep breath in, and then when you exhale, hum your breath out. So it goes like this. You take a deep breath in and then hum out. That's another great way to relax. Of course, as a mathematician, I have to teach you about square breathing. <laughs> and that consists of inhaling to the count of four, holding your breath for the count of four, exhaling to the count of four and holding your breath to the count of four. So it goes like this, breath in, hold, breath out, hold. So, and you can do that while you're taking the test. I teach students how to take tests, if, especially if you're taking a paper test. If you're taking a paper test, I always tell them, put your pencil down. Don't, don't write anything down. And then what, read every problem. Read problem one, problem two, problem three. Read all the way to the end of the test. Now, somewhere in there, there's going to be a problem that's so simple, so easy that you want to pick up your pencil and write the answer down right away. Don't do it. Reading the test all the way through the first time before you answer anything is going to give you some confidence because part of the anxiety about a test is not knowing what's going to be on the page, right? Yeah. And if you can read through it the first time all the way through and then kind of take a breath or do your square breath, that's even better. Get your feet flopping <laughs> and settle down. Then go back and do just the easy problems. Go back and do just the easy ones. So you get those easy points right away. And as you're doing the easy problems, your confidence is going to be built up and your, your stress level is going to go down. So that you will be able to think about, oh, yeah, that number six, I thought that might be familiar. But now that I saw this other one, I can see how easily that is to do. And you go back and just do the easy ones. And if you miss the harder ones, that you're still getting points, right? And it's the, get, it's the points that make a difference. Does that help? Yeah, it does help. helps a lot. And um, I really like the square breathing method because I've heard of that one before and I've been taught that one before and I don't need anything and I don't have to be tapping on my head in class or anything. So that's um quite simple. So the last thing I want to talk about before um this call ends is I watched a lot of your videos on YouTube and I realized you've joined a lot of podcasts and um, I watched I watched like your talks and everything. And one thing I've been dealing with is like stage fright, like anxiety before I get on stage or like talking to a large crowd. And I've seen how confident you are in front of a lot of people. So I'm really impressed by that. So I want to know if there's any tips on how to manage that. Well, you know, I have to tell you that before you go on stage, you should tap. <laughs> you know, how do you feel about, and I do have a lot of speakers that I work with that have lost their confidence or, you know, they're nervous before. And so tapping before, you know, about what you're going to do. And the other thing is thinking about, it's not about the speaker. It's about the audience and asking that the audience receives what they need to hear, right? Yeah. And that I'm just a, a vehicle. I've collected all this information and there's something pertinent, something important that somebody in the audience needs to hear. 
And so I want to share that with that one, with that one person that needs to hear what's going on. And so taking the focus off yourself and putting it back on the, um, on the, on the audience members makes a huge difference. So thank you so much for sharing um, your experience with like talking to people and I've learned like how to do the tapping method now, which is really cool because I mean, I have like a new thing I picked up on. So thank you so much for being here and adjusting the time zones and agreeing to come talk to me because a lot of people don't want to talk to a teen like that young and they think I'm immature and I won't take it seriously. So thank you so much. You're welcome so much. I just really appreciate what you're doing for the teen population. And that anyone can reach out to me. They can email me at hello at drnall.com. I'm on all social media. If they're looking for me, if they find, they can find me on Katie Nall, PhD, K-A-T-I-E-N-A-L-L, PhD. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, and they can reach out. I'd love to have a conversation with your audience members. So, as usual, before we end this, I would like to remind you to please reach out for help. Please talk to a trusted adult if you're feeling down or unwell. You can call crisis hotlines, and if you're in an emergency, please call your local emergency services. Um, of course, you can talk to me for a chat or for some teenage advice. But I am not trained and not a professional, so I would suggest talking to an adult or a professional in that area first. Please do not hesitate to seek help.